Mark chapter 13. <clears throat> and as he went out of the temple, we just conclude a whole temple thing in Mark chapter 12. One of the disciples said to him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Look, look at this. Look at this great feet, God. Look at this wonderful building, God. Isn't it great? Magnifying the building and not the one that made the stuff to make the building. God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Seest thou, see thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. I bet you that put a lump in their throat. Wow, this place is so great. Yeah, but guess what? It will be destroyed. And it happened 70 AD and it hasn't been fixed yet. That's a long prophecy. The, the dumb of the rock is there now. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, over against the temple, tells you where the Mount of Olives is, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privily, Tell us, when shall these things be? When's this place going to be destroyed? Get that comment right there. What has been the theme so far in this chapter? That temple, right? Been nothing else. Look how marvelous this temple is going to be. Well, this temple is going to fall, it's going to be broken down, it's going to be destroyed. Tell us, when shall these things be? When's this, when's this temple going to be destroyed, Lord? And you can't read any more into it. The temple of the building, not the temple of Jesus. No, they're talking about the building. When's this building going to be destroyed? Because it said, he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple. So they're looking at the temple saying, wait, so when's this going to be destroyed? I mean, we sure wouldn't want to jump into rapture dating in this chapter here. We don't want to do that. And tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign? Jews require a sign, so that's okay. When all these things shall be fulfilled. Now that question goes off in the future. And Jesus answered them, begin to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. That's a firm warning throughout the New Testament. Jesus, Peter, Jude, Paul, James, Acts, speak, John. Yeah, I think I already said John. Speak. There are people out there that will deceive you. Who is he speaking to? He's speaking to Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. These are the ones that were close to Jesus Christ. And if Jesus has to warn them about being deceived, what about you who don't want to, you know, you're saved and you're going to heaven when you die. That's okay. I think you have more chances of falling than Peter, James, and John. Even Demas walked away for whatever reason. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. Not just, I'm Jesus. But I am the Messiah. And we've seen that present day. And deceive many. That's a terrible word, many, here. I guess many, too. Only four yeah. Many will go the broad way, the Bible says. You don't want to be in the many. You want to be in the few. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled. It's kind of interesting. He's talking to Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, right? Well, you can't tell these guys... You're going to hear rumors and, and commotions and all that and have to worry after you've been long dead. You think Peter, James, and John and Andrew would be worried up today about World War III? 
So this has to be there. He's speaking to the disciples. That's the subject. Let's get the subject. They asked a question about this temple. 70 AD, they're going to come in. That's 40, that's less than 40 years. I don't have the dates when these apostles died. Maybe some of them died before it happened. I don't know. The question was about this temple. The temple is not there today. So we can't, yeah, this is going to go with prophecy in the future, but right now, that temple. For such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. All right, now we're going to the future. Now Jesus saying the end, okay, now we're jumping ahead. Right now, as far as Peter, James, and John Andrews, there's going to be a lot of wars. For nation shall rise against nation. That's typical generation newspaper top of media story. Someone somewhere, nation is battling it out. And kingdom against kingdom. It's news. It happens. If one nation ain't going to rise against another nation, another kingdom's going to rise up against another kingdom. That's, that's common. That will not end until Revelation 20. And you can't even say the millennium because when Satan is loose after the millennium, what happened? He gathers an army. And they're wiped out within three seconds, I think. But still, doesn't he grab, grab an army of people that were in the millennium living under Jesus? He found a group of people that wanted to rebel. And there shall be earthquakes. There were earthquakes in the Old Testament under the kings. And they were dated in the year of one king when this great earthquake happened. And I well, I dropped them now off my face. Every earthquake is, is, this is the end times. You mean the end times was back in the Old Testament with earthquakes? Jesus is going to cause an earthquake when he dies. The angels or God is going to cause an earthquake to roll that stone away. In diverse places, different, various, odd places, places where earthquakes, and that's yeah, happening today. There shall be famines and troubles. Oh, India, they're all starving to death. Jesus is coming. Weren't they starving to death in Egypt under Joseph? If they didn't buy the, the, the corn from Joseph? Well, people are starving in India, but Grandma and Grandpa McBeef is running around. <coughs> These are the what? The beginnings of sorrow. This is just a start. But take heed to yourselves, disciples, for they shall deliver you up to councils. Acts. Sanhedrin. I think it's, I think it's Acts 3, Peter and John, or Peter and James. I think it's Peter and John. They're already brought before the... As early as Acts 3, I believe that is. In the synagogue, ye shall be beaten. Acts 3 already starts. Or 4. And ye shall be brought before rulers. Paul. Paul got to witness to the Roman government heads. He stood before Agrippa. He stood before their wives and gave his personal testimony and had one of the kings say, Man, you almost persuaded me to be Christian. I would love to stand before President Obama and have him say, you almost persuaded me, because I keep on going. And kings for my sake. Well, those disciples went all over the world where there were kings, there were rulers. For a testimony against them. I don't know who the them is. The Jews, probably, because they're the ones doing all the all the all the abuse, all the, the the persecution in the Book of Acts was caused by the Jews. One guy, I believe, is caused the persecution because of Diana, and I believe that. And the ones that couldn't make their that's that's the silver to Diana, and I believe in the end of that story, the town clerk said, "Listen, you guys are you guys are being bad at this moment." Yep, and I believe they were Jews too. I would. Think. I think they were Jews. I know you're talking about the 
calls to re rebuke you, and then they lost their money for her doing what she did. They may have been Jews. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. All nations of the known world? Minus North America? Talking to Peter, James, and John? All right, church age. Yeah, it's going around the whole world. But does it say the gospel must first be preached among all nations and Jesus Christ will come for his church, does it? So we got a few more verses we got to read. Um, there's 144,000. What are they going to do? They're going to preach their gospel of, the, of the, the tribulation. There's all there's all kinds of gospels in, in the Bible. There's an angel in the tribulation that goes about flying about preaching a, the everlasting gospel. So, it's, but when they shall t lead you and deliver you up, talking to the disciples again. Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do you premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. And that verse is always widely quoted. Peter stood before the Sanhedrin and said, we'd rather obey God than man. Peter is in jail one night, and what words did the Holy Spirit give him? He's fast asleep. The angel had to smack him and said, get up, will you? And go tell your disciples, go tell the people you're alive and you're going about. He's preparing the disciples right here for the work of the book of Acts. Now, the brother shall betray the brother to death. That's probably true in the Acts. It's been true in the church age, and it will be truer in the tribulation. And the father, the son, the children shall rise up against their parents. You can say that today. But this is... Wait till we get to verse 14 and read where we are. We're in the tribulation period. Mom has not got the mark. I can get all kinds of good things if I turn mom in. Mom's got Jews in her house. Oh, by the way, this did happen during World War II. So what you're going to say in context that happened in World War II, Jesus is coming. Listen, Jesus is coming, but we can't date it. Yeah. And Jesus is not here. I'm sorry to say. The Well, the Je Jehovah Witnesses say Jesus has come fulfilled one of their false prophecy. He's come invisible. Individual, one nation, whatever that pledge is. Children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Well, that's not America yet. But it's happened. In jail. And what the government's teaching the children today in America, if you want to bring this up to date, it will happen. Yeah, it's in kindergarten. They're teaching them. Call 911. Daddy yells at you. Ye shall be hated of all men. Is, now, is that true? For my name's sake. We are involved in the street ministry. I know there's a lot of lines, but I'm speaking personally of what I know. I can only speak what I know. Have we ever had everybody just hate us? No, we've got people give us a thumbs up. Praise God. Thank you very much for being here. There is coming a time, and, and they use these passages, oh, the rapture's come. There is coming a time that everybody will hate you for Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, you will be sold. You will be turned in. I have not had anybody turn, turn me into the police because of Jesus. Now, they probably call the police and say, you know, he's all there loud mouth and all that. Well, we can't do nothing. That's the Constitution. Right. You remove that Constitution, then you're going to start seeing this stuff happen. But he that shall endure it unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, is that church age doctrine? You just blew this whole passage out of the church age. Don't go quoting the rapture to me. 
So you can't say this is church. You can't say today, oh, there's there's an earthquake in, off Daytona Beach last week. They were in the end times, but I don't have to endure it to the end. There are a group of people that have to endure to the seventh year. When Jesus comes, how do you know? But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. That's the three and a half year in the midst of the tribulation going into the great tribulation. Daniel chapter 9. Jesus has been talking about the tribulation. He's been talking about the book of Acts. Do you realize in the book of Acts, had the nation listened to the disciples, which are now apostles, had they believed those apostles in the word, you would have had the tribulation happen in the period of Acts, the seven years. But it didn't happen because they didn't believe. Now we're in a period called the church. Now I do believe that. I believe the Jews would have had received Christ. The book of Acts would have been the book of Revelation. How would the Gentiles got saved? I have no idea. But they would have had the seven years tribulation for what they'd done to Jesus four or five years earlier. <laughs> and we would be already past the millennium. You figure 33 AD, let's say 40, 47, 1,000 years, 1,047 thereabouts would, you know, would end the millennium. And we'd be in eternity today. But they didn't believe. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation. So we are now in the tribulation period in Mark 13. This is where Jesus has brought us. I don't mean we're in the tribulation period in the church. Spoken of Daniel the prophet. So Jesus said Daniel was alive. Daniel is a man. And Daniel was a prophet. I don't care what scholars think. Scholars can be flushed down the toilet. Standing where it ought not. The most holy place. All right. How important is this statement? When you see parentheses in your Bible, you need to stop and say, this is an important adaptation. A PS with great emphasis. Let him that readeth understand. Now, Jews do not read the New Testament. They do not read the Gospel. But we are speaking about people in the tribulation period. And Jesus put a note in here through the Holy Spirit. Let him that readeth understand. That's a prophecy that Jews are going to read the New Testament one day. And they're going to come across. Oh, whoa. I'm to understand. You believe that so? There is a guy that went over to a preacher and put a whole bunch of New Testaments in there. Now whether it's through there, I don't know. But. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Am I in Judea? Okay. Get out of town. Get out of Dodge. Mountain climbing. You better be physically fit. In the kind of world we are today, who would be fit to go climb a mountain? No American. Diabetes. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house. Jump off the roof and run. Hope you don't break your leg. Neither enter therein to take anything out of that house. Don't take no possessions. America. Tornado. Everybody throwing the thing in the car, getting out. Jesus says, leave the stuff and out. Don't even take the car. Just go. Highways are going to be packed. Go. Oh, I got the little kitty. I got the save it. No, go. Let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his car. You know, you know what the tribulation period is after the three and a half period, the great tribulation. You better get your eyes off possessions and material. It will kill you. Remember, with, remember the parable of the sword that some of the seeds were choked by the cares of the world? This will kill you. If you want possessions, you will receive the mark. 
That's the only way you're going to keep your possessions. It's going to be done by taxation, the Bible says. We just got a new freezer. Oh, freezer. That's a $10 tax. Oh, we already paid. No, $10 tax. But woe to them that are with child. Uh-oh. And to them that give suck in those days. You're not going to get no medical care to give that child birth. You're going to want to do all for that unborn child. But you got to receive the mark to do it. That young child that you hold in your arms. You got to receive the mark to take care of that child. Unless a nation will take care of you as a Jew. But I don't know how many that will be. I don't know how far spread that will be. There will be some that will take care of you. But not all. And pray that your flight be not in the winter. Sabbath is back. You won't be able to take flights on. They'll be grounded on the Sabbath. I don't think that's that flight means flight like flying away. Oh, we're in the modern day. There'll be airplanes. For in those days shall be affliction. Exodus 1.11. Look, I ran all the way back to Exodus. Exodus is coming back, isn't it, in the tribulation? All the plagues. Such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. This was not Titus 70 A.D. We're into the future. There are going to be things that are going to happen on Mother Earth that has never, ever happened. You think Noah's flood was bad? Except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh shall be saved. All right, let's bring it to Noah's time. No one would have been in that ark. Not even the animals. No one. This is how bad the great tribulation period is going to be. But, there's a great but. Some buts in the Bible are great. This but is the long suffering, the mercy, and grace of God. God is mean. God is wicked. God isn't angry. But for the elect's sake, Jewish people, not Calvinists, not Americans. Whom he has chosen. Who is he chosen? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. They will always be the seed of you guys. Forever. He has shortened those days. So time. This is such a, a passion that people fall apart. It seems like to me. Maybe I'm just getting older. But it seems like time is really getting shorter. Now, maybe that's because I'm old. I've always heard old people say it's getting short and I was young and all that. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm old, but it seems like times are already getting short. And I got to speak. Excuse me. Again. <laughs> like, very, 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 sneeze, sneeze. And then, and then, if any man shall say to you, on the vast exodus, that there is the Antichrist. He has revealed himself. Lo, here is Christ. Singular. Singular. Or lo, he is there. Believe him not. Come on, we found the Christ. That's what Andrew told Peter in the book of John. And Philip went to Nathan L. When, when somebody comes to tell you in the great tribulation period after the three and a half years, hey, here's Christ. You better not believe him. That's not the one. You're falling into the wolf's mouth. Oh, yeah, so we don't, this is not us. This is tribulation period. You know what this should do? should give you a thing. You know what? I ought to be witnessing to people. You know what I pray for? I only be witnessing the Jewish people. I pray for missionaries. I do not know that God knows is working with missionaries. I mean, working with the Jewish people wherever today. I may not know them. God does, and I pray for them, even though I don't know who they are. 
Ready? For false Christ, plural. Amongst the Antichrist, there will be a bunch of people running around saying they're the Christ. Waco, Texas is going to happen in the tribulation period. And Moonsung, whatever his name was. and See, it happened before the tribulation period. Today, it's happening in the church age. It's going to happen in the tribulation period. There are going to be people popping up even with the Antichrist saying, I'm Christ. And false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders, the Pentecostal movement, to who? To Jews. That's Jews require a sign. First Corinthians 1 11, I believe that is, or 22. Now, here's a good magical word to seduce. To seduce. Look that word up in the dictionary. Take a look at that word. He was seduced by the woman with her eyelashes. That's a wicked word. If it were possible, even the elect, these people are deceiving the Gentiles and some of God's elect, which are the Jews. The world of the Gentiles. The Gentiles is done. The age of the Gentiles are done. And they are falling for these religions. Of the tribulation period. Trying all. Satan's trying all now. He's trying to get the entire world against the Jew. He almost did that in World War II. But there were some nations that protected him. There were nations that openly protected that Jew. In the tribulation, you're going to have to go undercover. And Jesus said they don't even know they're doing it. How's that? I'm waiting for a movement now before the Lord comes. We're, we're, we're as a nation, we're helping the Jews. And we're, and you know, we're giving them, taking care of them, feeding them really. Yeah, but the Bible says you're not supposed to know you're doing that. <laughs> but take, take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all these things. That's a warning of God. Most of that warning is I don't need to take heed because I won't be here. I'll be with Jesus. But in those days, going back to what we just read. Now we're going to another future event. After that tribulation, does that now put the date? where we are right now in the 24 the sun shall be darkened revelation said that's the seventh year and the moon shall not give her light revelation said that's the seventh year the stars of heaven shall fall the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken that's revelation 12 that's that great star wars in heaven michael versus lucifer satan and that's where God tells Satan and his angels, get out. Go. You'll never come back. Never Job 1 and 2 anymore. That's it. And Satan comes to the earth angry at the earth. <laughs> you want to worship him? You've been serving him all years. And he comes back angry at you. Because he knows his time is short. And then. And then. I'm not looking for this. I am not going to go, the day, my wife and I sometimes we go, we'll go see the sunset. We'll sit there and sunrise. And in Tampa today, the, the sunrise coming, we're not going to sit there and say, oh, there'll be no sun this morning. Now, there may be a cloudy day, as many there are, but the sun is still behind those clouds. But there's coming a time that that sun will be darkened. The moon will not give her light. And then shall this day see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. How can they see him coming if there's no light? John 1 says he's the light. You know, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, well, guess what? After the seven years of tribulation, it's not a two choo train, it's Jesus Christ. Right now, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, it may be a two choo train. But when the seven years, when the sun and moon are gone and done and darkened and all that, it's Jesus Christ coming. 
You know what the Bible says they're going to be doing at that point? They're going to take all their idols and cast them. They don't want to be caught with those idols. With great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels. And shall gather together his elect Jewish people. Book of Job. That could be us. I know we're not angels. But Job says an army that goes all the way through. And when you go back and look at Job chapter, Joel chapter 2, when we studied that, I said something about that. There's something remarkable in Job 2. That's also the story of Rahab in Jericho. When Joshua sent those guys in there, go get her family out of there before we destroy that city. And I said, you can take that and throw it in the garbage can because that's my thought. I'll tell you that. But it's remarkable. You see these angels coming and, and gathering up? Jesus has been speaking about it through Mark, I mean Matthew and Mark. The tares among the, 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 the tares among the wheat. Shall we go gather? No, wait to the harvest. I'll send my angels, they'll gather up the tares, bind them up, throw them into can't say hell because Jesus never preached about hell, but he did, so that's a lie. He preached about hell and go get my wheat. Who's the wheat? Mark 13 says the wheat is his elect. Who is the elect? Oh, those of Calvin. Absolutely not. Well, the Americans. Because we're, no, absolutely, definitely, for surely not. It's Jews. What? How does a Gentile become not a tear? How do they not get gathered by the angels for, for to be cast into the fire, the flame? They got to help his elect people. Then they're spared. And I think if you take Joel 2 and the Christians, I said you could take this, throw this in the garbage again. Go get Rahab out. Go get her out. Can't take her. There was a promise made to her. And there's a promise Jesus said to the nations that helped the Jews. You're going in the millennium for helping my people. And those who don't help the Jews in the tribulation period. He shall send his angels, shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the outer posts of the earth, to the outer parts of heaven. Those will not get gathered up. This is a good gathering here. This is God's people. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. And her branches yet tender. And put it forth leaves. That remind you of a story that just happened? Ye know the summer is near. Hmm. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that is nigh even at the doors. And that's where they throw that verse into the rapture. Because you see rumors of wars, you see earthquakes, you see people saying, I'm Jesus, and you're seeing these occults rising. But have you seen them, this moon go dark? And yet they'll try the blood moon, the blue moon. What about the sun? Oh, it's got sunspots. Yeah, but those sunspots don't put the sun out. You really got to stretch that one. So in like man, when you see these things come to pass, know that it is not even at the door. Haven't we already read about the Antichrist taking seat in the, in the temple? Yeah, but Christians will say, oh, we're at the rapture. Excuse me. Let, let's look at something for a minute. What comes first? The Antichrist in the temple or the church getting raptured? The church getting raptured. So if these events show that the rapture is going to happen... You just put the church in the tribulation period. Because the Antichrist is showing up in Mark 13 when he said, Behold, all these things happen. You know you've done a deadly thing to the scriptures. By the way, he's talking to Jewish people. In a Jewish gospel, Christ has not died and been buried and rose from the dead yet. He's going to speak to Jewish disciples who are going to be apostles or going to a Jewish people in Israel and preach the gospel. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Amen. And my words, but my words shall not pass away. 
Look at that. You know what's going to happen that's already happened that you haven't paid attention to history? The history will repeat itself. Alexandria, Egypt will be burned again. The Great Library. And there's only one book that will survive the burning. The Word of God. Libraries, bookshelves will burn up. But the Bible will remain. It's kind of hard when you got a religion that doesn't use the Bible to be Christian, Christ-like. But of the day of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels, but men who write books, women who are on the TV, preachers who are on the radio will tell you that when they when in heaven, neither the son but the father. No, that's ridiculous. See, we can know the seasons, verse 28. Yeah, we're, we are in the last days. But there's been these kind of commotions. Oh, everyone's been saying these are the last days. Even Paul was saying, Jesus is coming. Paul's day and Peter's day, you had a, a Roman uh, leader that would burn Christians on the stake and have his patio party. You can whistle things, tiki torches. Well, Christians were the tiki torch. He would put them in pitch and light them on fire and have have uh, Christian parties on his patio. That's not today. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven. Even the angels don't know. So someone gets a revelation by an angel. He didn't get a revelation by an angel. Neither the Son, look at that, and Jehovah Witnesses will say, Jesus doesn't know it in the flesh, but the Father. The Father are one. Jesus said the Father and I are one. Explain that. I can't. And if I were to try to explain it, I'd make myself a liar and the Word of God a liar. And if you don't want to believe Jesus is God, that's your trouble now. I believe he's God. And I'm not really concerned about that. I know he's God. I know my salvation. And when I get to heaven, i got other more important things to ask Jesus about the Bible than this situation here. I want to see how he fed those people that with those bread and two fishes. That's what I want to see. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. We don't know. Jesus may come right now. Or he may come at the moment I'm not looking for him. For the Son of Man is as a man to take in a far journey. Who left his house and gave authority to his servants. Does that remind you of the parable of the vineyard he just told? Well, didn't he say he's going to cast them out and give the vineyard to somebody else? How many? Twelve. Can you name those servants? <laughs> I can. The twelfth one, it could be Paul or Manassas, is it? But I pretty much named the eleven. He's going to put the vineyard in control. And not even really Paul, because Paul take, goes out of the vineyard, steps out of the vineyard. So probably that Matthias, however you say his name. I can name the people that Jesus is going to put in the vineyard. Before that vineyard is torn down by the Gentiles. And gave authority to his servants and every man his work. Every man had to work. And commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore. For ye know not when the master of the house cometh. Did you catch something there? Did you catch a word in there that's been used? Master. Remember I told you how the three three ways they've been using that word? The, the disciples have been using it as a title of authority. The, the religious he thinks he's one of us. Honorary master degree. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, they have a master degree. 
That's a stolen title of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't want that degree. Of the house cometh at even 6 p.m. At midnight, I think you know that time, or at cock crowing, that's before 6 a.m. Because or in the morning, 6 a.m. That's when the rooster wakes up, rubs his eyes, and the farmer can't press the snooze button on him. But the wife can take him and make fried chicken. Or in the morning. You don't know when he's coming. There's when? When? What is this coming of Jesus Christ? The rapture for the church? Absolutely not. But then again, we know the tribulation is seven years long. But, but, we were also told that the time will be shortened. The tribulation, the time, the calendars, all that's going to be all messed up. Least come, less come suddenly, he finds you sleeping. Like the, the disciples in the garden came back, found him asleep. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, okay, this is all, this is all, Revelation 3, 3, watch. And if I could throw an invitation out here, can I bring up Santa Claus? Can I show you imitation Santa Claus here? You ready? You better watch out. You better not pout. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. He knows when you've been asleep. He is a peeping Tom. He stole from Jesus Christ. You see the imitation Santa Claus in this? Santa Claus knows everything Jesus Christ knows and does everything Jesus Christ. Santa Claus comes. Jesus is coming. You better watch out for Santa Claus. He just made it rearrange his name. Yep. Yeah. People are wanting Santa. Jesus said in my name. I forget. I'm quoting this verse. Told her, but when he cometh in his own name. <coughs> that Hindu will receive. Well Santa Claus comes in his own name. Satan's going to come in some kind of name. You got ministries based upon the pastor's name. The name of Jesus Christ is a name that Acts 4.12 that all men will be saved. There's no other name. There's no greater name than Jesus Christ. Why be ashamed of it?